Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw this pastel leopard. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. And for more wildlife art tips, please head over to studiowildlife.com. Okay, so to start with, I use black and I block in the darks first and then use a grey pastel just to block in a base colour and then I use pastel pencils of varying greys to add in some slight details. The side of the face that I'm doing here I didn't want to, oh, the side of the body I didn't want to be in massive detail so it was quite blurred out. And then for the face I follow pretty much the same steps. I put a layer of black in first and then a base layer of dark grey and then build up with those colours using the pastel pencil from a dark grey to a lighter grey and eventually white on top. So it's just the same as I paint my paintings. I work from dark to light to give the impression of layers. So you can see that here. So I am working on pastel matte paper um, or pastel matte board. And I find this is my favorite paper to work on. Um, it really, really takes up those pastels very nicely. And the grain of the paper is very smooth. So you don't end up with loads of white bits between your marks. So here I've just slowed down the drawing so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just starting with a dark black, carbon black colour and then building up those colours on top from a dark grey to a much lighter grey. Now you can see here I'm working on that eye. So here you can see me building up the rest of the nose and I am just using that dark black pastel pencil to block in where I want those dark spots to be, where I want the black of the mouth to be. This piece itself was available through the David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation and 50% of the proceeds are going to the foundation to help with wildlife conservation efforts. This piece has actually now sold, but I am selling prints of this piece through my website, studiowildlife.com. If you would like to purchase one for yourself, please head over there now and check it out. I'll put a link below in the description. So, all I'm doing is using a dark grey pastel pencil, going over those black spots and giving it a little blocking. I'm not pressing too hard, just enough to put a base tone down. Now here, because this area went white, I'm starting with a lighter grey as that base colour, which I will eventually work on top of with some white. So all I'm doing is putting in little lines uh, to represent the fur. And like all of my other videos and like all of the other paintings that I do, I make sure to vary the direction and the size of each of those strands. So they're not all going in exactly the same direction. Some of them are curving off in different random directions, which adds to the realism and makes it look more lifelike. So I have actually picked quite a few different greys to work with this. I'm not just working with black, a dark grey, a light grey and a white. What I'm actually doing is working with about six different greys of all varying warmth. So I've got some greys that appear more brown and some greys that appear more blue. So for the areas of shadow, I'm using the areas that are cooler, the bluer, uh, I'm using the greys that are cooler, the bluer colours. Um, this is because I want them to feel colder, like they're in shadow. But for the lighter areas, hit by light, I'm using the much warmer greys. Okay, this is so that those areas feel warmer, so they're hit with sunlight. If you are painting with black and white, or you are doing things monochromatically, it is important to think about whether your greys are warm or cool, or whether you just want black and white and no mid-tones but I think for realistic drawings like this 
or semi-realistic drawings like this. You want a range of warmths um, so that you've got a real differentiation between the shadows and the highlights of the piece. Okay, so next here you can see I'm just using that white pencil to block in the shapes or the, the fur underneath the muzzle. And the good thing about this is if you press gently, you sort of smudge some of the colours underneath so it leaves a light grey mark and the harder you press, the more white gets left behind and the lighter those marks are. I hope you guys like this video where it slowed down a little bit more. Um, I don't always do these videos because I don't always have the time or the capacity to actually film them like this. Um, please let me know down in the comments below if you like the videos like this or you'd prefer them as shorter time lapse videos. For the nose, all I'm doing again, using that carbon black and just blocking in the direction of the fur and just making sure that I know where I'm going to put that fur and where the shadows and the highlights for that nose are going to need to go. This is my typical process. This is what I do for every drawing that I do or every charcoal drawing that I do. I am relatively new to pastel. This is probably my fourth or fifth completed pastel drawing. Um, so it is very new to me and I do hope to get better. Um, if you have any tips for me for pastel drawing or anything that you'd like to see about pastel drawing, you, anything that you want me to try out, please do let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to that at some point. So I block in the basic shapes and then I just shade over the top of that with the black pencil just to give myself a base layer to work on top of so that I can establish the layers of the fur. So once I've done the carbon black, I work over the top with a dark grey. I think it's called graphite grey, the pencil that I'm using, um, but don't quote me on that. Oh no, it is. It is graphite grey. I can see it. Um, and this is just a dark grey colour that I use to establish more of those under layers underneath. So I'm just following that same approach. Just blocking in the individual hairs, focusing on the direction that those hairs are, going in, focusing on the way that they're curving, so whether they're curving to the left, curving to the right, and making sure to add that variation between each one so that it doesn't look too uniform and the piece doesn't get boring. Next, I believe I'm using a French light grey. This is a very warm light grey. sort of a brownie tinge to it which I really liked and it was really good for the mid-tone layers of the fur. So I'm just going over those darker layers underneath making sure to leave gaps between the fur and making sure to leave gaps between them so that some of that darker fur shows through underneath and allows you to see those layers going through and um, one of the things that I see with a lot of beginner painters is they put their fur too close together and um, because they are trying to get a detailed painting and they're working very close to their picture what you need to do is step back away from your picture and make sure that the marks that you're leaving are actually effective marks if you put your fur too close together when you're close up when you step away you'll have done too many fur strands it won't look very good, it won't look very realistic, and you'll have wasted a lot of time. So it's much better to leave bigger gaps between your fur strands, and to check that those gaps are right, you just step away from your painting, or look at it in a mirror, or something like that. That is one of the biggest tips that I have. As you are drawing, as you are progressing through your painting, whatever it is, do look at your piece in a mirror. And because when you see it reversed, it gives you an idea of the proportions and the perspective and anything that's looking not quite right about your picture that you can't see when you're looking at it normally. Mm -hmm. 
as I progress with the picture, what I'm using next, I believe, is an aluminium grey. And that's just a lighter bluer grey that I can build those lighter fur colours. So all I'm doing is just building that fur, following the same technique and the same process I did with the other colours. And then finally, with the white, picking out those absolute highlights. But again, the good thing with pastels is because it picks up some of the colours underneath, you don't actually get a pure white left behind, which is good because it's very rare that you actually get pure white in real life. So another thing that beginners tend to do is use pure white in their paintings, which makes them look not as realistic as they could if they've used an off-white instead. So using pastels is really good. I'm actually finding using the pastels a lot easier and a lot quicker than using paints, because I don't have to think about using the, mixing the colours correctly. I've got the colours that I've got, and that's what I have to use, and that's what I have to make the picture work. Which saves me a lot of time, because with my paintings, mixing the correct colours is one of the biggest things that I struggle with, um, and it's the most time-consuming thing for me. The actual painting, once I've got the colours, doesn't take that long, but it can take me an hour or two before I start each painting and in the middle and the ends of the paintings to actually correct those colours and get them right, or get them as right as I can do. Whereas with these pastels, I've got the colours that I have available, there's not really much else I can do, so I just seem to focus more on the actual drawing and creating the piece than faffing about trying to get the correct colours and tones. One thing that you might notice is I am right-handed, so I made sure to work on the left-hand side of the painting first, and then work towards the right, and that was purely so I didn't smudge the picture with my hands. Um, if I was painting, I would probably do a big block in first, and then do my dark layers, and then do my light layers of the entire painting, rather than working in sections like this. Um, one thing that you could do to combat this is put a sheet of tracing paper or a sheet of greaseproof paper between your hand and where you're drawing, uh, which will prevent smudging, but obviously I couldn't do that because then I wouldn't be able to show you what I was working on. You wouldn't be able to see it um, and that would be no good for filming. For the nose, I wasn't really focusing that much on the detail. Um, I was just trying to get the colours right and the tones right. Um, I'm just basically drawing in shapes rather than drawing in an actual nose. That's another big tip when you're just starting out. Focus on the shapes rather than the details. If you get the shapes right and you get the tones right, your painting will look more realistic than something that has thousands and thousands of hairs but the shapes the proportions and the tones are wrong so beginners focus on your tones which are your lights your shadows so how light and dark your colors are you you're using are or your grays are using are and um, rather than the details and the hairs so build your basic shapes up first get those right build your shape basic tones up and then focus on your details.
Okay, here I'm pretty much finished with the piece. All I'm really doing, again, blocking in those darks, those greys, and then the white over the top. Um, for this bit, there's no detail needed, so all I'm doing, quickly blocking it in, and then using my finger to smudge it. And then finally, I've got some big, soft pastel sticks that I'm using for that background, and just smudging it with my finger. And then here is the finished painting. Um, I really hope you like it. Um, it is one of my favourite pastel pieces that I've ever done. Um, as I've said, it is for the David Shepard Wildlife Foundation and it has sold, so thank you very much for that. And 50% of those proceeds did go to charity. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And for more wildlife art tips, please, please, please head on over to studiowildlife.com.